So I've been a serial entrepreneur in Silicon Valley for many years, mostly involved in video games, designing and imagining worlds that make sense. At the dot-com crash of 2000, I decided to invest in filming case studies of organic and biodynamic family farms and sharing their stories through a very popular television cooking series, which I also produced. Now, in the year 2000, the word organic literally market tested as manure, compost, poop. You might say we were ahead of ourselves at the forefront of the organic movement. Eleven and a half years of case study research, plus a mixed bag of tech startups and investments, and I was offered a senior level position at Stanford University. At Stanford, I'm surrounded by the best and the brightest colleagues I've ever worked with, on a campus that has spawned over 13,000 startups. As an entrepreneur in residence, I'm living in the most comfortable bubble ever, until the year 2013. I started to see the climate data from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. At NASA, the mathematical equation that actually predicts civilization collapse based on this climate change data. The UNCTAD report from 2013 about the downward spiral and decimation of food-bearing ecosystems around the planet. And also in 2013, a telling uh, research study from the Rockefeller Foundation, which highlighted the fact that up until 1950, 75 percent of the Earth's population lived in self-sustaining small communities. And that by 2050, the opposite will be true. That 75 percent of nearly 10 billion people will be living in crowded, coastal megacities. And in my mind, this is an absolute recipe for disaster. At this point in 2013, my son Louis was two and a half years old. And I looked into his eyes, and I heard him ask me a question 30 years from now, which was, where were you? And what did you do? <sighs> Our doomsday clock is definitely the environment, and it's three minutes to midnight. So I decided to get around campus and to see who was doing something, anything, that I could apply my entrepreneurial background to. And that's when I discovered the Solar Decathlon. It's an annual 20 university competition that brings these universities together to compete on who can build the most energy positive homes. So they have 18 months in a design cycle, but only two weeks to build on a designated location around the world. So in the summer of 2014, I flew myself to Versailles, France, and I like to say in the shadow of a most unsustainable palace, I saw 20 very beautiful, energy-positive homes get built on top of a Schneider Electric microgrid, load balancing their power, electric vehicles buzzing around. It was like a clean, green version of Burning Man. And I realized in that moment that it was possible, that if we marry these um, energy-positive homes with high-yield organic food production, with clean water, clean energy, waste to resource management, that we could redefine neighborhood development for the next two to three billion people coming to the planet. Regen Villages was born. Regen Villages is the Tesla of eco-villages. We're planning to build and retrofit communities that strive to be self-reliant at the nexus of food, water, energy, and waste for the benefit of thriving families. The centerpiece is food high-yield organic food production, where you don't have to be a farmer or an engineer to live in regen villages. These are managed services. You pay a monthly association fee. However, we're planning and designing a blockchain-enabled app that will allow people to volunteer in the community and offset those association fees. So it's an eco-village on your own terms, in other words. We have a regenerative platform underneath Regen Villages where the output of one system is the input of another. We use biomimicry to take what Mother Earth has perfected over four and a half billion years with some technology enhancements to increase that efficiency. 
I'm happy to say that we are developing our first community here in Europe. And that's going to be about 25 minutes east of Amsterdam in a wonderful community called Almira. Almira was underwater 55 years ago. The Dutch had diked off the northern part of that area, pumped the water out, and since then, nearly 200,000 people have moved there. We have reserved a gorgeous piece of certified organic farmland, proving that we can produce more organic food, clean water, clean energy, and mitigate more waste while housing hundreds of people there than if you just left that farmland to grow organic food or for conservation. We actually build regen villages before we build a single house, we start under the ground with water cisterns, with um, using the earth essentially as a battery for heat sink. But then we move up to permaculture, food forests, berms and gilts, so that walking through regen village is actually an edible experience. We are so very blessed to have architectural framework partners in Denmark called Effect who are helping us to envision regen villages all around the world, starting first with our cold weather climate context here in North Europe. It's a house idea inside of a greenhouse envelope, where in the dead of winter, you could be sitting on your deck in a light sweater and a cup of coffee. Living inside regen villages, you show you want to be social by being on your front porch or being in the community uh, piazza kitchens or cafes where we're taking the surplus organic food that we're growing and turning that into healthy, wholesome meals for people. We also have planned curriculum, maker movement, innovation labs, because we really feel very strongly that the future is not about work and jobs as a metric, but a new era of self-worth. At home, inside Regen Villages, you live within nature, not separate from it. And there's some technology embedded, but it's a means to an end. It's about sentient home that grows with your family and learns your family's rhythms. The Tesla of Eco Villages model is embedded sensors that shares data to the cloud and regen villages in similar climate regions can learn from each other and autonomously improve. Now, something very exciting happened this summer in Venice, Italy at the Biennale for Architecture. Effect Architects from Denmark and regen villages had a small press announcement. We went absolutely viral. 22 and a half million views to our site 14,000 emails from every corner of the planet, and 3,100 families signed up for the first 100 homes. What's significant for me is what I thought would take 10 years to convince and motivate construction companies, material companies, real estate developers, governments, has taken just a few months. They want this. They want to collaborate. They want to cooperate. They want to compete. Buckminster Fuller once said that you don't change the existing reality through fighting. To change something, build a new model that makes the old model obsolete. Living tucked in Regen Village, you are safe, you are resilient, you are regenerative. This is the way forward for neighborhoods so that in the future we can look into my son's eyes and to your children and your grandchildren's eyes and know that where we are right now at this critical time in history, they will live in the knowledge that we did this now and that we did this together. Join me in building Regen Villages around the world. Thank you so much.